In the next hour, we want to put a smile on your face, elevate your endorphins, and bring you happiness. Welcome to Say Yes, Be Happy with Natalie Botros. We spend so much of our lives chasing happiness, it might just be where you least expect it to be. Natalie and her guests are going to show you how and where to find it. And now, your host, Natalie Botros. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalie Botros, your host, and welcome to my podcast, Say Yes, Be Happy, where we find all aspects of positivity in our lives and say yes to life and be happy. Today, this week, we're going to talk about sex, <laughs> but not only sex. We're going to talk about the tips about getting our ultimate sexual health. And I don't know if you knew, but the American standard diet is composed of excess sugar, refined carbs, saturated fat and trans fats. And it's the primary cause of obesity, obviously, and diet related chronic diseases, have heart, heart problems, and also some of our sexual problems. And today my guests and I, we're gonna talk about the effects of this bad diet and how we can change it and how we can feel better. So let me talk a little bit about my guest, who is a dear friend of mine. <laughs> he has two decades of experience as a health educator and a broadcaster and is a former sex educator. She is a busy bee, has three podcast shows. <laughs> she, is in, she is the host producer of Talk Healthy Today, co-host producer of the Naturally Savvy podcast and co-creator and co-host of the podcast Active Allyship. It's more than a hashtag. She is also the author of Clean Eating, Dirty Sex, Sensual Superfoods and Aphrodisiac Practices for Ultimate Sexual Health. In her book, she teaches us to stock our pantry with healthy sensual foods, advice on fitness activities that threaten your sexual health, and provide tips for deepening intimacy. Please welcome my guest, Lisa Davis. Hi. Thanks, Natalie. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited that you're here. So for my listeners, I've been on Lisa's podcast several <laughs> times. So for us, it's like, it's a really fun dynamic to change. And for once I'm the host and she's my guest and yes. we can talk about her knowledge. Although like every time on our podcast, we chit chat about everything. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we really do. So Lisa, I want to talk about the standard American diet. It's like, I think it's kind of scary. Could you tell us like about it and like the impact that it has on our sexual health? Oh, sure. So it is aptly named SAD, S-A-D for standard American diet. And again, you mentioned a little bit when, before you brought me in, it's yeah. the highly refined foods, the foods that are full of trans fats. I mean, honestly, when you go to the grocery store, you really want to try to shop on the perimeter because most of the stuff in the middle is so highly processed and so full of junk and so many things that you can't pronounce. Have you ever looked at the labels carefully? Like it's just mind blowing. So just to give a little bit of physiology, we have in our blood vessels, there, there's some, it, it, it's, it has an endothelial wall. It's kind of like thin wallpaper. And you want that to stay strong and flexible because blood flow is key for sexual health for both men and women. Mm -hmm. So when you're eating the standard American diet, you're breaking down that endothelial wall and you're causing problems with it. And then your blood flow doesn't flow as well. And then you're not getting the sex that you'd like to have. And then you're feeling, oh, maybe you're gaining weight. You're feeling out of sorts. You're frustrated. You got brain fog. So that's standard American diet. It's just a bad idea. <laughs> so it's like, basically it's really making feel us not attractive, but also kind of blocks our our sexual lifestyle because our sexual life, because it's, it, it doesn't function. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, and that's the thing that a lot of people, you know, for years, saturated fat was the enemy. And now they're finding more that it's actually high sugar mm -hmm. and white flour and white pasta that all breaks down into sugar. And when you have those high triglycerides, that's not good for your, you know, your endothelial tissue as well. And that's why, and we'll get into it, why we want to eat foods that are rich in polyphenols and antioxidants yes. and all that good stuff that help clean them out, clean out the cells, clean out the, the arteries, keep things going and flowing and moving the way you want, uh, instead of making them like, you know, inflexible and full of junk, right? Yeah. Wow. Okay. And so what should be, we should be eating? I mean, I know that we're going to go deep in, in, like, in a lot of examples, but in general, like why we should eat like better for healthier sex life 
Yeah. Well, first of all, I call myself a whole fooditarian, which I should trademark because people, oh, that's a great term. I'm like, wait, wait, I, I came that. up with that like 20 years ago. Cause I, and I'm not talking about shopping at Whole Foods. I'm talking about eating whole foods. So the rule for sexual health is the same for any other health you're talking about. You want to eat foods as close to their natural form as possible. Now there are certain foods that you especially want for your sexual health. You want to have foods that have nitric oxide in them. Nitric oxide is what helps your blood vessels to expand. And we want that expansion. So watermelon is amazing for that. Oh, okay. Eats are great for that. You also want to have foods that have a lot of healthy fats. So nuts and seeds and olive oil and avocado oil and non-farm fish, right? You want to get those good fats, taking a nice, good, you know, M, um, I'm, say, I'm about to say MP3. <laughs> <laughs> I do too many podcasts. I always have MP3s. You want to take a good, you know, fish oil because what happens with that is that helps with your sex hormones. You need that healthy fat. And then you're going to get the protein from the nuts, which is also important. You're also going to get zinc, which is important. That is really good to boost your testosterone. Don't forget those leafy greens though. The leafy greens, the darker vegetables, the colorful vegetables, those have the antioxidants and the polyphenols I talked about that you need to keep your blood vessels strong. It also does great things for your skin. Of course, you like for your- better, You look better. And, no. and again, the, that's what I say to people, even if you're celibate, this is a great book because- it's got over 50 recipes that were developed based on foods that are good for your sexual health by Erin McDonald. She's a registered dietitian, nutritionist for Clean Eating Magazine. And it's just going to give you the type of foods you want to be eating, whether yeah. you're sexually active or not. Exactly. Just to feel better. Right. I, mean, I always say when you go to the grocery store, when you, you want to buy product and you don't know what to buy, don't buy product that has more than five uh, ingredients yes. or ingredients that you cannot pronounce. It means that it doesn't like they're, they're, these are like, like fake chemical products. Terrible. And as you said, like it's always better to get the whole foods. But I know that some people, they have difficulties, but at least, you know, try to find the middle. Right. For exactly. your health and sexual health, obviously. <laughs> You know, one of the things that I think is so important is finding your why, because if you don't, if you don't really have a reason that you want to change your health, it can become fleeting. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I have my high school union coming up and I want to lose 10 pounds. It's like, well, you know, I'm not putting that down, but how about I want to be active into my eighties. I don't want to be all hunched over. I don't want to carry around a lot of extra weights because it's not good for my joints. You know, I'm at the age now where I just want to feel good. I want to be functional. I want to be able to do the things that make me happy mm -hmm. without pain. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, aesthetically, it's nice to look nice, but I know I already have arthritis in my knees. Um, I'm not that old. <laughs> so I already feel like I have some challenges. So I want to make things as good as they can be. So yeah, look so, for your why really ask yourself deeply what it means to you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good tip. <laughs> so what made you write this book? Because like you, you, you had like so much on your plate, your, yeah. besides your family, you have all those podcasts. And I know that it takes a lot of time. You're like very active, everything you're helping everyone. So like, what made you write this book? Well, the reason I wanted to write a book is, or this book is because I've been in health media since 1999. Mm -hmm. um, I created my first television show called Health Power, KRUZ. It was a little station in Scotts Valley, California, near Santa Cruz. And so I've been getting books, as you can see, uh, from other authors, which is great for the last, you know, 20 years. And I've never seen a book on sexual health that included a memoir section, because I feel like sharing my story, sharing my struggles, both with eating clean and with my issues with sex and love uh, addiction and, and really turn, having low self-esteem and turning to that to validate myself. By sharing a little bit of that, maybe somebody else will say, oh, wow, I've been doing that too. Or geez, I, I really, yeah. I, people can change. So that's why I included stories from other people as well. I feel like when you can have that personal connection with somebody, it just makes you feel less alone. And then I go on to guide you on how to get where you want to be. Um, also, the stories are really funny and some of them are heartbreaking. Um, I do share a very traumatic event that happened to me and kind of, kind of led me down the wrong road. Um, but I came back from it and, and here I am. And I hope to help other people as well. Yeah. I think like it, it's for listeners who don't know about the book, she shares stories. She shares very personal stories. She shares also stories of some of the big experts. Like talk oh, yes. about that as well. Like you, I know that you have like more than 40 experts, yeah, over, like 50. Is, yeah. over 50 experts who, who, 
who kind of like pitched in. Yeah. So tell oh, us absolutely. like how did you choose them, and then like how did they, you know, like how did you select them, basically? Yeah. Well, you know, it's I've been lucky over the years. I've interviewed amazing people. I've done probably five thousand interviews. I think maybe even more. I mean, it's been a lot, and it's been amazing. And so what I did is I went through and I thought, okay, who have I interviewed who I know has a really great background, who understands, who's okay and comfortable talking about sexual health. So we've got Dr. Denise McDermott. She's a holistic psychiatrist. She's amazing. We have uh, Lori Shemek, uh, PhD. She's amazing about foods and healthy fats. We've got Beth Brady's MD. She's a lifestyle MD out of Harvard. Uh, Charles Maddox, who's written books on diabetes and have TV shows about diabetes. Andrea Donsky, who is my partner with Naturally Savvy. And what I wanted to do was take people again who have the knowledge, have the info. I've interviewed them before and I knew they could contribute because I know a lot of stuff, but I wanted it to be like, this is your one-stop shop. And again, sexually active or not, this book is going to guide you because they talk about, some of them talk about their personal experiences. Some of them talk about the best foods to eat. Some of them talk about, I have a great uh, Vanessa Marin. She's a sex therapist and how to mm -hmm. kind of reconnect. And all of those people are such an, I wouldn't have the book without them. So yeah. I chose them based on my experiences with them and our interviews from the past. And also, I mean, people need, need to understand that it's not a book only about sex. It's a book, oh, no. book about finding your healthy self. Yes, which absolutely. leads to a better sex life, but it's really about finding your happy, your your healthy, uh, and be the ultimate person that you can be, basically. Yeah, no, that's really true. And I mean, there's a whole chapter on skincare because I'm like obsessed with skin, natural skincare. <laughs> you got to look at what not only what you put in your body, in your body, yeah. sorry, what you put on your body is very important. And so I have a whole chapter on skincare and the steps you can take and how to use natural skincare. And David Pollack, who's a friend of mine and he develops skincare products. He includes a whole list of ones that are really bad for you. Like it's, it's so amazing. Like in Europe, I think there's like 1100 chemicals that are banned. And in the U S there's like 10, you find wow. them everywhere. So even just to get that, so you can read the list. And when you go shopping, you're like, okay, but if you can stick with more natural products, that's even better. For That's you. amazing. I just yeah. see that we have a caller from Brooklyn, Dino. Oh, <laughs> you're ready? I mean, of course. Entry? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Dino. Uh, hi, how are you? Fine, and you? How are you? Um, all right. I, I have a question. Um, you know, I'm 55 years old, and um, you know, I, I'm kind of curious on. Uh, on the food I should be eating maybe at, at this age, as I, I noticed, um, like you, you're mentioning before about hair uh, uh, and skin. Um, so like I've noticed like throughout the years, like, you know, my, my, uh, my hair seems to be uh, not as lively as it used to be. Um, so I'm looking in, I'm just looking for some type of um, change uh, or sure. something that maybe they can help me in that kind of department. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, again, try to stick with foods that are as close to natural as possible. I'm not, a, I don't, I'm not a vegan, I'll say. Um, but they have had a lot of, a lot of people who, who go vegan have a lot of success. There's a gentleman in my book named Mark Ramirez who had diabetes and all kinds of health problems. He was like a hundred and something pounds overweight. He went vegan. He lost the weight. Now he travels around and, and helps other men. He also had erectile dysfunction. And that was a big part caused by his, uh, you know, unhealthy standard American diet lifestyle. The other thing that you want to do, so you, I think if you're going to eat meat, make sure it's grass fed. Okay. And just eat small amounts, but you really want your plate to be full. Of, and I'm sure everyone's heard this before, but a lot of colorful fruits and vegetables makes a difference. And I'm a really big fat person. You've got to have your healthy fat. Like people go, I can't eat an avocado a day. I'll get so fat. No, if you keep eating the, you know, Rice Krispies, no offense, Rice Krispies or the white pasta, that's, what's going to put weight on not a healthy avocado. I and mean, if you're eating 20 of them a day, yeah, but you can have an avocado a day, have a you know a couple handfuls of nuts. Those are the kinds of foods that are going to help with your testosterone. They're going to help with your sex hormones. They're going to help with your skin and your hair. Take a good omega-3. There's so many great omega-3s out there. And that's, that's what I would recommend. So for someone who doesn't like yeah. vegetables, for example, what roast what them, they? roast them. I'm okay. telling you. So I've been on this asparagus kick Yeah, and you take <laughs> avocado oil because avocado oil has a high smoke point so you definitely should not you they say olive oil is good for high it's not for high heat coconut oil they say it's it's no. really the best is avocado oil I, I agree. drizzle a little avocado oil on your asparagus 
put it in the in an oven for 15 minutes on 400. The tips come out crispy. My daughter the other day was like, and I'm not exaggerating. She's 16. She's like, this is better than chocolate cake. Like I ate it all. <laughs> I gave her like a few pieces. I ate the rest. She goes, mom, you ate all the asparagus. Like that's how good it is. So roast your broccoli, roast your asparagus, roast your carrots, roast everything. I'm telling you, it, it gives, makes them crispy. It's delicious. And you're using a healthy oil and also stay away from vegetable oils. Don't listen to the, the, the hype yeah. about no, no, you really I want agree. to, they're not good. No, <laughs> they add more omega sixes and that's just going to damage your endothelial tissue and your arteries, et cetera. So Dino, I hope that was helpful. Was that helpful Dino? No. <clears throat> well, I, I guess you were kind of strain. Uh, I think Natalie, you mentioned like if a person doesn't like a lot of vegetables. I mean, I <laughs> seem to fall into that category a little bit. Where uh, have you roasted I don't them? Eat that many vegetables at all? No, I, I I can't say that I have. But it makes uh, all the difference. I'm telling you. I just yeah. I, I just know myself. I'm, I mean, once again, you're a creature of habit. 55 years old. I I just don't. I mean, I I kind of like to look at like those kind of supplements as uh sure. as maybe to remedy the situation um i don't but i don't know um, now you really if you if you eat a standard american diet and take supplements yeah the supplements are going to help a bit i think everyone should be on a probiotic and a vitamin d and a fish oil mm -hmm. but i think if you don't don't care for vegetables there's other ways you can put them in smoothies you know you can always put a handful of spinach in and use a bunch of berries. Berries are great for sexual health and get into that later, but fruits, do you eat maybe fruits instead yeah. of vegetables? Maybe yeah. that can be like the balance yeah. for you. Or berries, especially yeah. because berries are high in all the good things we talked about. And as a matter of fact, there's a Dr. Joel Kahn. He's a doctor. He's fantastic. He tells his patients, he calls blueberries, blowberries and strawberries, um, I think, oh my God, I forgot. I think sex berries. Anyway, at any rate, you eat a lot of berries. So <laughs> that'll help. Throw in some berries, throw in some milk yeah, alternative fruit, fruit, if you can and make a smoothie. Yeah, and then right now, yeah, at so the beginning of really yeah, at the beginning of the podcast, Lisa was saying watermelon. Right now, with this oh, heat wave that we have, like watermelon is the best thing for you. So you should yes. eat a lot of that. <laughs> and cherries too. Oh, perfect. The dark red. Yeah. Yeah. People, oh, too much sugar. No, don't. It's fruit. Just as long as you're not, ju you know, juicing everything, don't juice all your fruit because then you're not getting fiber and the sugar is yeah. going to spike your insulin too much. So, or spike your blood sugar, which produces more insulin. So anyway, I would just stick with the the fruits, but just, just do me a favor. Just try to roast vegetables and, and just see what happens. Cause it, it's made a huge difference for people that I've recommended this to. Okay. okay. Oh, thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dino. Thank you, Dino. So we're gonna taking we're gonna take our first break. We're talking. I'm Natalie Botros, your host. I'm talking with Lisa Davis about the ultimate sex health. And when we come back, we're gonna continue with more questions. We're gonna dig in in the book with more specific examples. And if you have questions, please do not hesitate to call us. You're listening to Say Yes, Be Happy. To reach our show today, we invite you to phone in to 1-866-472-5788. That's 1-866-472-5788. Or send an email to bvg at the bond-vivantgirl.com. Now, back to Say Yes, Be Happy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Natalie Botros, your host. We're talking with Lisa Davis about her book, Clean Eating, Dirty Sex, but even much more about that. And we just had a call before the break by someone who was asking if you don't like vegetables, what you should do <laughs> to have a better health, skin, hair, and also sex life. And Lisa said, maybe you should eat more fruits <laughs> if you really, really don't <laughs> like your vegetables. Only, right. Although you can try to roast them. but yeah, or put them in a work, smoothie. Exactly. But if you're like really against it, try to find fruits. And then the fruits that you were saying, Lisa, were? Watermelon and berries are the top. Berries Absolutely. always, they say they're the best, best, best. Yes, they are the best. Absolutely. And if, oh, we, yeah. if we say like some vegetables, I mean, I know leafy greens, but you were saying asparagus is like amazing as well. Asparagus is really good because it actually ha helps with the sex hormones as well. And anything dark, anything green, 
leafy, things like that are really important too. And right. that's where you can just put a you know, handful of spinach in your smoothie, yeah. right? And have it mostly berries. You I, put a little uh, flax I, seed in there, chia yeah. seed in there. It's good. I mean, personally, if I don't have my greens daily, I feel like bad. Like at night, I'm like, oh, there's something wrong with me. I really need that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So what about the fats? Like, I know that everybody says, but nobody listens. <laughs> like <laughs> vegetable oil, it's not, they're like, oh, cannel. And I say, no, vegetable no. oil is not good. So which are the good fats that we should use? Okay, so you want to avoid, again, like you just said, the vegetable oils, okay? Because yeah. we've been brainwashed. I mean, I remember as a kid, you know, nothing against Florence Henderson, but like Mrs. Brady with the Wesson oil and the, uh, <laughs> if, it, if it tastes like butter, but it's not, it's chiffon, you know, the whole margarine thing. Now they do have some better margarines out there that do have uh, better oils, but you have to read the ingredients. But yeah, you want to avoid the canola oils, soybean oil, just the vegetable oils across the board. You want to get the olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, but you don't want to high heat any of them except for the avocado oil. If you're going to do something where you have to fry something. And again, you know, once in a while, right? Like I'm not, you know, I, there's these potato chips that I have <gasps> every once in a while, but they're made with it's avocado okay. oil, right? <laughs> I'm, you know, I don't want people to feel completely restricted. You know, you have to live your life. You have to have some things that, that really make you happy. Although the great news is there's so many good foods that taste amazing, but back to fat. So yeah, those are the good fats. Those are the omega-3s. And again, going back to Dino's question, that's going to help with your skin. It's going to help with your hair and it's going to help with your blood vessels. And that's what you need. You want to have that blood flowing. And it's not just for men. Women for arousal down there needs, yeah. they also need to get that blood flow. Yeah. So that's, that's amazing. So, um, also, I mean, what I do, for example, if I want to do chips, I do it by myself. I do, you know, like potatoes, I slice them like very thin Mark. and I put a lot of avocado oil and then they're like very crispy. And then I put vegetables like that too, like zucchini yeah. and it, it helps. So it's, I love it's yams cool. like that. I cut them, I call them yam coins. I'm like, does anyone want any yam coins? And I'll just cut them really small and <laughs> yeah, the avocado it, it's perfect. So what I love about your book, it's again, as I was saying, it's filled with stories and there are like so many stories, but there's, there are like a few stories that I want to talk about. I want to talk about the story of Mark Ramirez, because I think it's a good example how he completely changed his life and actually uh, cured his erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Can talk about that. <laughs> well, that's what's so interesting, I think, is that one of the things that you need to realize, and this is big, mm -hmm. if you are having trouble getting an erection, gentlemen, that could be a sign of something much bigger. It usually is a sign of much bigger. It means that your if your arteries are clogged down there, they're clogged up here. It can mean that you have you know heart disease issues. You don't want to end up with a stroke, right? So it's sort of like the canary in the coal mine. That's going to give you that warning that like uh oh, if it's not working down there. So Mark was like I said, I cut maybe 150 pounds overweight or so, and his whole family, like he had a bunch of siblings, all of them had diabetes. And once he got the diagnosis, he didn't do anything for a while. And it just, he just got worse and worse. And then his mother passed away and his brother passed away from complications. And he finally was like, I got to do something. So he discovered for him that being a vegan really helped. And he lost the weight, the erectile dysfunction went away. And like I said, now he travels around and talks to a group of men because men, a lot of men don't want to talk about this. There's such a shame in it, right? Of Which course, I don't think yeah. It's just, people don't want to talk about sex in general, right? And it's too bad because it's such an important part of an overall healthy life. And so for Mark, I mean, what a difference. Now, again, I mentioned earlier to Dino, I'm not telling everyone to go vegan, but you do need to have a heck of a lot more fruits and vegetables than most people have. I mean, it's, it's kind of sad going back to the standard American diet, but I think a lot of people, their vegetable is a French fry. And that has got to change because that's doing your arteries and your health no favors at all. Occasional but, potato chips and avocado oil or making your own crispy things. In the oven, that's one thing, but the standard American diet is another. I mean, I remember that they were saying like a pizza was a vegetarian, you know, like it was like the, the, the good vegetarian dish that they were giving to kids at schools at some point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's great. Oh my gosh. We could do a whole show. <laughs> I mean, like it's crazy. The lunches in this country are not great. Yeah, that's another that's show. That's a whole nother show. <laughs> yeah. So, so Mark changed his eating habits and- yep. He lost all the weight. And yep. Oh, he looks amazing. There's pictures in the book. You got to see his before and after. They're astounding. And it was all through diet and, and lifestyle, obviously through fitness, right? Of course. And yeah. then there's an emotional component as well, but it definitely gave him his sexual life back. 
and his overall health. Again, if, even if you're celibate, if you want to be healthier overall, this book is still for you. So you said, and fitness. So which kind of exercises do you advise for better sexual health? Well, you know, it's for Mark or for other people as well. Yeah. (laughs) Well, so my husband does yoga Mm -hmm. and it has made a big difference in his sex drive. And I've always had a very high libido, like uh, unusually. (laughs) So his is normal, (laughs) but now he'll be like, Hey, honey, do you want, I'm like, Whoa, Hey. Um, So there have been studies showing that yoga does help. I, I, I think it's the way it builds your lean muscle. It's just the relaxation of it as well. I mean, it is challenging, right? It depends on the type of yoga you're doing. Mm-hmm. And then another great thing is dance when you're and partner dancing, right? So when you're dancing with your partner, you're getting more close. It's intimate. It's fun. That puts you in the mood. I mean, I know a lot of people like to watch dancing on the stars. And, you know, it's fun and everything, but get out there yourself and take a dance class. But at the end of the day, you want to have two components. You want to have strength training, which you do get from yoga and weightlifting because when you lift weights that also helps with metabolism it also helps with your testosterone and those are important in your sexual health so anything that builds muscle like i do pilates and people think oh that's just no it's hard (laughs) i've been doing it for years i also lift weights um you can do yoga any activity you enjoy because at the end of the day if you don't people who say well i hate exercising it's like well there's got to be something that you like right if you find your why and you really figure it out i think there must be something that you like but those are the it's important to get a a mix of cardio and strength training i always say dance 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 it makes you happy yeah Yeah. (laughs) it releases all those endorphins you're happy it's good exercise it's like it it has it all it's basically the fruit of diet yeah (laughs) It's like, it's sweet, it's cool, and it's, it's, it's fun. So it's it, like, is good. it really helps. And so yes. for men and women, like a little bit more exercise there, like, are there other tips like for women, especially because like we, we mostly talk for men? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's in, well, all this stuff goes for women, everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, you need the blood flow. That's super important. So all these foods are going to help. Um, Also, I think aesthetically, if you want to feel better in your body, and I'm not, I'm really big on this movement called health at every size, you know, I'm a size 12 and I'm not ever going to be, I used to be wicked thin, which is crazy. Like if someone had told me when I was young that I'd be a size 12, I'd be like, you're insane. I'm like a double negative zero. And and I hated it. I know that sounds funny. People like, oh, you hated being thin, but I really did. It was not, was not for me. Um, So I'm very happy in my body right now. And I think that if we're trying to like get to a size that isn't realistic for our body type, that's not what I want. I want you to be comfortable in your body. If your goal is to lose weight, that's fine. Just do it in a slow, healthy one to two pound a week way. Don't go on any crazy diets and just make sure you're eating whole foods, right? I mean, that's the thing. There's so much, the media and Instagram, I mean, I like Instagram, but you don't even like, there's so much now with, with so much pressure on how we're supposed to look. And I think we need to get more into how do we feel, right? I think that's so important. And the other thing for women too, is there's a whole chapter on hormones. There's a chapter, there's information on unhealed trauma, how to connect with yourself, connecting with your partner. I think if you don't look at the emotional side of things, you could eat all the berries and spinach and fish oil you want. But if you're emotionally dealing, haven't dealt with something that's traumatic, that's keeping you from feeling comfortable in your body or having issues around being touched, or because if something had happened to you, you, ha- you have to look at that. It, yeah. it's not Let's talk about, about that. Yeah. yeah. Because I think, yeah. Tell me, tell, well, tell I just us. Think like, it, you know, like if, if, you know, if you, if you had some trauma, let's say around some sexual trauma that just doesn't go away. And I, I'm a big advocate of therapy. I'm a big advocate of really of journaling, of looking deep within. And, and you can't, there's a, there's a line in a Rush song that I love, I have to love Rush. And uh, the way out is the way in, right? You can't get out of trauma by just ignoring it, I feel. Of so course. if you feel like you're at a point where you're doing all the other things and you're still not where you wanna be in your sexual health, you feel like there's something blocking you really, you know, consult somebody, talk to somebody. There's a chapter in here, a woman named Dr. Margaret. She's amazing. It's called inner bonding. And she offers a whole system of how to get in touch with yourself and how to heal. So there are things out oh, there. It's expensive. My insurance doesn't cover it. There's so many things out there that you can, you can do on your own that will help you grow and feel better about yourself. And at the end of the day, that's what I'd love for people is to feel healed and whole. 
But the thing is, the word that you said, the key word for me was like, you have to accept it. You cannot deny it. Denying it, it's not going to help you because like pushing it down, down, down those feelings, they're going to like blow up one day on your face. So yes, it's, it's I know that it's very hard to, to live again, because like when you accept this, it's like you accept that this trauma happened to you. But there are like, as you said, several ways that if you cannot go to a therapist, I always advise people to write it down. Yes. Write it down. You know, like it's like kind of journaling, but my write it down is like on a piece of paper, just write it down with all the emotions, everything that you felt, anger, joy, fear, anything. And then afterwards, read that paper and then throw it away or like burn it and then do it again. Do it again until reading it doesn't make you feel bad. Like it's like, it's starting to make you feel okay about it. You're like, okay, yes. this is, this belongs to my past. So at least you can accept it and then move forward. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you can find your own process, but to ignore it, because a lot of what happens is then you emotionally eat and yeah. you're going to, you're not going to be emotionally eating kale. You're going to be emotionally eating the standard American diet. Exactly. Right? And that's just going to make everything worse. <laughs> exactly. So you're going to be shut down emotionally and then you're going to be shut down physically. So your sexual health just goes out the window and that's not what we want. And then like, you don't like yourself because like you gain weight, you don't feel sexy. You don't feel, you don't feel good basically. Right. Yeah. yeah. And again, try to be easy on yourself on the weight side of things. That's my advice. And again, move your body and eat as many whole foods as possible and just be kind. You don't yourself. have to be a size zero to, you know, feel good about yourself. That's Not for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So <laughs> in the book, like what I love, it's like, you don't only share the stories, you have the recipes that we're going to talk after, but you have like, what you say, the ABC of sexual, the eating dic dictionary of ABC of sexual health. Right. Uh, in your chapter 14. So if I have, you, if you had to name like five most important ones. I would say nuts because of the protein and the fat and the zinc. Mm -hmm. I would say berries, because that like we talked about with the antioxidants yeah. and the flavonoids and stuff. Uh, I would also say dark chocolate, because dark chocolate has those great polyphenols in it. And again, make sure it's 70 or higher. Milk mm -hmm. chocolate ruins it. It's mostly <laughs> sugar. Yeah. Look for a low sugar dark chocolate as well. Uh, the other thing would be asparagus because asparagus is really good for your hormones. And the last one I would say, which is, is kind of funny is it, because it's not great for making out, but onions and garlic, I'll put those together. <laughs> those are really good too. Yeah. You know, here's the good thing. If I eat garlic and my husband eat, eats garlic and then okay. you want to, yeah, it kind of cancels out. So I'll, I'll be like, honey, I'm going to eat a lot of garlic at lunch. So make sure, or, or I'll put extra garlic <laughs> in dinner or something. So That's then so if we cute. fool around, it's not like, whoo you know? Yeah. And what about ginger and oyster? They always say like oyster ginger. Yeah. Well, you know, too. that's, what's interesting. You know, the top in the book title, um, aphrodisiac practices for ultimate sexual health and connection. I was a little apprehensive about the word aphrodisiac because yeah. I feel like people think that's not real, but here's, here's the, the truth. This book is all science-based. These foods have science behind them and the aphrodisiac foods do as well. So yes, oysters, I probably should have mentioned that is also a really good one. Um, the types of foods that they mention as well with the chocolate and the oysters and things like we just talked about, yeah. there is science behind that. So I want to say that as well. So if somebody says, here's an aphrodisiac food, don't just, you know, blow it off. you like, ah. like, oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. There's science. <laughs> I'm big into, I'm big into science. I'm, I'm a science nerd. So no, I like but it. I mean, like, it's like, it's fact, you know, like everybody can have yeah. an opinion and then like a way of looking at things. When one right. you have like the facts, science is like, you cannot change it basically. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we have also, you have another chap chapter on sexual enhancement supplements. Yes. Yeah. And that's the thing, like you can get some of these through food. Okay. So I'm just going to look at these. One of them is arginine and arginine again is you can get that through the beets. It's really important. Um, another thing that I think is really good is you want to look at uh, well, when I mentioned berries, I mentioned, oh, sweet potatoes are also good. Uh, mm -hmm. avocados are great as well because they have the fat, but in beets, um, or in nuts, I apologize. In nuts, you can, they're high in L-arginine and that converts to nitric oxide. Remember we talked about nitric oxide mm -hmm. is essential mm -hmm. for the blood flow. So that's really important. But when we're talking about the enhancements, you can get arginine and that's where my long-winded answer comes from through the food. So if you want arginine, you can get nuts for arginine. 
You can also, the watermelon is arginine. Turkey is high in arginine. Chicken has arginine. But wow. if there is something that you want to take, most people have heard of maca. That's a potato-like vegetable. It's, it's yeah. grown in Peru. You can get maca root. It helps with energy. It helps with stamina. There's also uh, something called butcher's broom, and that helps with circulation. So this is something in the book. There's a whole bunch of information on that. So that's something that you can explore or you can Google on your own and see what's best for you. Oh, that's great. So basically arginine, like if you had to name arginine, maca root. Yeah, those are the two I would say. You said the butcher. The butcher's broom. Butcher's There's broom. A lot I like the name. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Great. So we're about to take our second break. And I'm Natalie Botros, your host. And we're talking with Lisa Davis about your ultimate sexual health, where she's giving us little tips. When we're going to come back, we're going to talk about the recipes in her book, because like she has like a lot of recipes in this book, easy recipes, yummy recipes. So see you in a bit. You're listening to Say Yes, Be Happy. To reach our show today, we invite you to phone in to 1-866-472-5788. That's 1-866-472-5788. Or send an email to bvg at the bond-vivantgirl.com. Now, back to Say Yes, Be Happy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Natalie Botros, your host, and I'm talking with Lisa Davis, who is talking, giving us tips about your ultimate tips, uh, sorry, ultimate sexual health. And my dog. <laughs> exactly. They're in the and, background making noise. <laughs> hello, doggies. Hello. And so we want to talk in this last segment about her book, which has 50 recipes. Am mm -hmm. I right? 50 yeah. recipes. And tell us a little bit, like, how did you choose those recipes and what, what are your favorite ones? And, and how oh, it can help us? <laughs> well, you know, I tend to eat very simple. So like I'll have a little grass fed meat and a yam and a salad and an avocado or some, you know, something like that. So I thought I'm not a recipe creator. I thought, Hmm, who is a recipe creator? Oh, Erin McDonald, RD. She's amazing. And she's, again, I mentioned earlier, she's a nutritionist and registered dietitian for clean eating magazine. She also mm -hmm. does her clean eating Academy. She also has several books. You rock breakfast, how to, I think it's how to um, rock breakfast, how to rock lunch. Just look her up. Erin McDonald. She's amazing. So I said to Erin, listen, I need a recipe developer. She's a whiz with spices. She makes everything taste amazing. And I need these particular foods. Can you create recipes? So these are all new recipes that she created specifically for the book and specifically for sexual health, which is pretty flipping awesome. And they are delicious. And we've got breakfast, we've got lunch, we've got salads, we've got desserts. Oh my gosh, really good stuff. So I was super excited because I was clueless. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. here, here's some grass fed meat. Have fun. No. <laughs> so are there like any of these recipes that like you, you, that is your favorite? Well, I love, and so there's breakfast and we have really cute chapter names for the, the different uh, sections of, of food. So we've got breakfast in bed. There is an asparagus. See, here we go again. Leek. Oh my God. I love leeks and butternut squash frittata, which is delicious. There's a great Southwest frittata, which is also good. I'm really big on those types of seasonings. Um, if you like veggie filled egg muffins, those are so easy because you just make them, you put them, you put them in the muffin tin, you put them in the oven and then you have them for a few days, right? Yeah. Those are really good. And if you, if you like muffins, there's a lemon berry muffin, but it uses almond flour and almond flour is a great substitute for any type of, you know, regular wheat flour it makes a big difference. Of course, um, for people who have gluten intolerance, it's like yeah. it's a great substitution. Yeah. There's all kinds of great stuff. Um, if you, if we go to erotic entries, uh, my favorite, and it's so, it's so funny. It's so easy. It's a spice chicken thighs. It's just like six different spices that you mix together and then you rub them on the thighs and you cook them in avocado oil on, in a pan and you, you know, get them all braised and nice. And they're just delicious. Uh, another one, if you're, if you are vegan, I would say 99% of the, okay, maybe 95% of the recipes are vegan. So there is a really good, there is some meat dishes. A chicken scallopini with lemon caper sauce is delicious. I love the miso glazed black cod with baby bok choy. Uh, Thai chicken tacos with peanut sauce or lettuce wrapped. I mean, there's amazing things. Wild salmon poke bowl, all okay, really I'm fresh. <laughs> I know me too, right? 
um, all really good. And there's a picture for each recipe, which is great. If we, but the spice, the chicken thighs are good. There's a great uh, shrimp with a, a cauliflower mash that you'd swear is potato, which is really good. And I love that. Uh, some of the, the salads in here are really good. She has a farmer's market salad. And this has baby spinach, it has uh, basil leaves, it has strawberries, avocado, it's got pistachio. So there you're getting the berries, yeah. you're getting the nuts, you're getting the greens. I mean, that's like, woo! Yeah, yeah you have it all. Yeah, and if you're planning like a romantic evening, don't serve a heavy pasta meal. Have a, you know, make the spiced chicken thighs if you eat meat and make this salad. Yeah. And then you're going to have more energy. I mean, how many times have you planned a romantic evening and then ate too much and then <laughs> just sat on the couch. Move. Or is that just yeah. me and my husband? <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody did that. But right? actually, it's it's interesting that you're saying this recipe because like on Facebook, where I have like some people asking me, Natalie from Turkey, she's asking, what about Mediterranean cuisine, Turkish food? For, Excellent. Like, because like she says, it's vegetarian. And then I have someone from Italy, Gilda, mm. <laughs> who says, what about Italian food? Well, there's pasta, but in Italy, I think- small amount. Yeah. They, they don't like eat like is us in the U S like no. huge. They it's, it's a little appetizer, right? Yeah. They have a small plate of pasta and the rest is really nice meat like chickens or turkey. I don't know if they have turkey as well, but I know that with the Mediterranean, there's a lot of emphasis on the healthy fat on the olive oil and fresh, lovely fruits and vegetables. Nuts of course. And so yeah, Mediterranean is a great way to go. So I think that, and Italian too, again, as it's long it's as Mediterranean, not... Italian, and the exactly. I was about to say, yeah, exactly. Uh, let's not forget about dessert. So, yes. for people oh who like, you see people like, you don't need to eat all those like refined sugars. Like, you can eat good desserts. Yeah, I mean, here's this is what I've heard back from people uh, is everyone's favorite. It's ooey gooey brownies. Now you do have to be able to have nuts because there's raw smooth cashew butter in there. There is a little bit of raw honey in there. They're not sugar-free. Um, there's some cinnamon. There's 70% dark chocolate. They're just like that chewy, yummy texture that's just heavenly. And they're a really nice treat. Uh, if you're craving more of a berry, there's a mixed berry bowl with sweet cashew cream. So like if you're like, you know, I'm trying to avoid dairy and especially factory farm dairy. That's, a, that's definitely part of the standard American mm -hmm. diet. Um, that's really good as well. I mean, there's so many good ones. I, this one is fun too. And at first I was like, oh, this sounds so interesting. So it's a balsamic roasted strawberry shortcakes. So you actually put a little bit of balsamic on the strawberries. And then when she, you use almond flour to actually make the shortcake. So again, you're not going to get that, that burst of sugar. That's going to screw up your whole, you know, insulin and everything. So that's good. That's amazing. Oh, oh, and if you like, I love eggplant. There's a sticky and spicy Japanese eggplant. Uh, there's miso maple glazed rainbow carrots. I mean, there's so many good things. Cauliflower fried rice. And of course she uses avocado oil. This one's fun too. Aphrodisiac salad with sexy fig dressing. You've got figs, you've got freshly squeezed little orange juice in there, apple cider vinegar, lettuce, avocado, orange, strawberries, almonds. I mean, this again, these, <laughs> I mean, Erin, shout out again, definitely check out Erin McDonald. She's yes. amazing. And she so, rocks everything. I mean, like th those looks appetizing. And then like you gave me, <laughs> I'm hungry now. But yeah. the question is, how can people get to you? to your book, how can they get, like, give us a, how they can find you. Oh, well, it's so easy. Super easy. Lisa Davis, mph.com. That's it. www.lisadavismph.com. You can listen to my shows, Talk Healthy Today, Naturally Savvy, and Active Allyship. It's more than a hashtag. Um, Active Allyship, I've been doing for almost a year, and I'm really proud of that show. It's not about healthy living. It's about unlearning racism and bias and being uncomfortable and being willing to be uncomfortable and have hard conversations so we can get some darn equality around here. I have much stronger words, but yeah. of course, <laughs> my passions are healthy living and social justice. And that's what you'll find. No, that's great. Um, in the meantime, I, I still have more questions coming up. I oh, have someone great. who's asking about steak, if it's a good thing to eat steak. <laughs> I believe steak is a good thing, but not again, not factory farm steak. You need, if you can find grass-fed steak, preferably organic. But listen, if you can't get organic grass-fed steak, at least get grass-fed steak. And people go, oh, but it's more expensive. And I say, well, then just buy less of it. 
Yeah. Like just have a small amount of steak a with a lot of point. vegetables and, you know, that and some good healthy fats, right? Um, I'm also, I do like quinoa. Quinoa is good as well. You know, if you're going to, if you're kind of craving a grain, but I am, I do think steak is good. I mean, it has so many good vitamins and health. It, it's, it, I, if you have grass fed, it, it does have more healthy fat. And again, it's a saturated fat thing is really so overblown. And there's a lot of research out there. If you, you know, want to look it up, a uh, Vinnie Tortorich had a great movie about that. And I can't believe I'm forgetting the name right now, but it'll come back to me. And if it doesn't look up Vinnie Tortorich, uh, he did a great movie about, oh, it's called Fat, a documentary. And it's fantastic. And it really emphasizes how important healthy fat is. And that saturated fat is not the enemy. I'm not saying like only eat steak, but you know. Yeah, of course. Sugars no, but, are worse I mean, for you. I say, you know, like, you know, my book is like, if you are what you eat, should I eat the skinny girl? I tell people, <laughs> I said, you want to eat that. happy food? So eat a cow that is happy or like a beef that is happy. Right. And eat good food so you can be happy as well. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Happy, basically. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's really important. I, I really do. And I think that, again, just it's better to buy things in bulk that you can, like beans are really good if you can have beans. Um, if you do eat whole grains, you can make them in a rice cooker. Um, you can, you know, you can make quinoa, you can make rice, you can make oat, oat groats. If you want more information, just, just follow me or message me on Instagram at Lisa Davis MPH. And I'll tell you what, what yeah. you can put in a rice cooker, like it's so easy. That's great. Um, but then again, the emphasis should be more on a lot of vegetables and fruits. And yeah, I think steak is great, but try to get it grass fed. And the big question, alcohol, <laughs> it's, is it like, can you? Can we have some alcohol? You know what's so if interesting have... is there's so many different differing views. Yeah. I think wine is fine. I think wine is actually helpful because it has the polyphenols and the antioxidants. Red wine, it, especially red right? wine, yeah, yeah. But just not to drink too much, right? I mean, yeah. that's the big thing. I per, I don't drink, so I prefer to get mine from dark chocolate because it had kind of a similar profile in terms of mm -hmm. the different polyphenols and stuff. But uh, yeah, I think it's okay. You just don't want to. You know. Actually, not not get like cocktails where they add like all those like sugary juices and stuff. Like if you're gonna drink, like drink wine, exactly, obviously. or yes. like dry alcohol, you know, on the rocks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I have to be honest. I didn't address that, and it's funny. I don't know why I didn't. I did because not address not that. Anymore. I guess. Yeah, but other people are now. I feel like a jerk. Um, <laughs> more considerate. You know what I've actually found is very helpful as well is um, edibles, and I wish I'd put them in the book. Um, if, if you live in an area where marijuana is legal and I actually, my psychologist recommended, I try them to help with relaxation and anxiety and, and it's amazing, but they can also, because when you, when you do like a combination of THC and CBD together, especially the CBD kind of conquer or, or not conquers that it, um, negates the effect of the paranoia some people get. And it also kind of relaxes you. You might feel less inhibited. And when you are in under the influence, I suppose, um, you, you know, you feel a little <laughs> more comfortable and everything's a little more intense. Now I'm not here to push them. I'm just saying it's something that I have found, I have found useful. Cause I figure if you're going to drink a glass of wine, you know, I think if that's, if you prefer an edible or something, and, and, and they even have really good high quality ones in like 70% dark chocolate, which is pretty nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I never had any edible. Like if it oh. comes to New York, I have to try, you know, you got to come you visit. Know, I kind of tried, but and then like, I didn't get it. It didn't do anything. I was, I oh. didn't know where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> they told me put it in the salad on your time. I was like, what? Oh. Well, here's the thing with edibles just to say, you do not take one and wait 10 minutes and be like, I don't feel anything. And then eat another one. You got to wait an hour because okay. the mistake I made when I first did it is I took too much. And I literally laughed for like three hours and it was a quite a release, but my husband and daughter are like, Oh my God, what has happened? And now I've gotten to the point I don't do it. And again, this isn't something you do all the time, but once in a while, it's just something that when you get the right dosage, it just kind of kind of just helps That's you. Perfect. You know, again, I figure it's like a glass of wine, yeah. like everything in moderation. Yeah, great. So before I start my bye-bye, blah, blah, my last question for you. What makes you happy today? Oh, being here. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And the thought of going swimming in, in a pool that I finally got after all these years. It's been my lifelong dream to have a pool. And I have a pool. And it's 93 degrees and 100% humidity. And I'm going to be going swimming. And that just, 
with my daughter. Ex uh, what a pleasure. With this heat, it's like the perfect thing. I'm coming over. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, I've I already will. invited you. Come, come yeah. for like a couple of weeks. We got plenty of space. Perfect. And then we'll do our walks and we'll do our chats. <laughs> Perfect. We'll do our edibles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good. So uh, before I say goodbye, I want to say to everyone that finally my podcast got picked up on all podcast platforms. So please, if you like what you hear, <laughs> go to Apple Podcasts, rate me, show me some love, give me good comments. <laughs> And I will try to keep bringing more and more interesting guests like Lisa. Next week, actually, we're going to talk about finding the right job for you and finding happiness in your job with Jeannie Brantover. So I'm very excited about that as well. And what can I say? Thank you for listening to me. It's, it's great to have all those questions. Please, if you have questions for Lisa as well, keep sending me. I will forward to her. We're always in touch. Oh, yes. And Goodbye for now. Thank you so much and have an amazing week. Bye. What do you have to lose? Say yes. Be happy.
What do you have to lose? Say yes. Be happy.